Now, if you took a fiber optic gyroscope and the earth was rotating once a day, you would measure a 15 degree per hour drift. That was his hypothesis, and then he set out to test it. He got himself a fiber optic gyroscope, and he set it up, and lo and behold, when he turned it on, it measured a 15 degree per hour drift. So it supported a rotating earth, and it invalidated a stationary earth. Now the approach to that in science is, well, if you put out a hypothesis, you designed a test for that hypothesis, and that test invalidated your hypothesis, you would accept the fact that your hypothesis was wrong and come up with a different one. Not so in the flat Earth. They are so convinced that the Earth is stationary that the results had to somehow be in error. So they repeated them, got the same 15 degree per hour drift. They put it in a bismuth cage to try and shield it from heavenly energies. Still got a 15 degree per hour drift. They went after test after test after test to try and figure out how this 15 degree per hour drift was erroneous. Yet the 15 degree per hour drift remained throughout all of the tests. There comes a point where you have to realize that there's a 15 degree per hour drift because the Earth is rotating. They don't make that connection in the flat Earth. In the very same documentary, Jaron designed a very good experiment to detect the curvature of the Earth. He predicted what he would see on a flat Earth and on a curved Earth. When he did the test, the results showed that the Earth was curved. The only thing he could say with that was interesting. However, for the last three years, he and Mr. Bob 15 degree per hour drift, Nodell, have been spouting the same flat Earth nonsense on their podcast, Globe Busters. Despite these devastating results, the Flat Earth International Conference 2019 went on as scheduled. It made absolutely no impact. Now this would be shocking enough. However, Bob Nodell was caught on an open mic admitting that this was devastating news for the Flat Earth if they let it out. They had to find a way to invalidate it before they released their results. He knew what the implications of this test were, yet continues to talk about a stationary flat Earth. That says volumes about the scientific integrity of these so-called leaders of the flat Earth community. So let's take a moment and talk about what science is rather than what it isn't. Science does not prove things. Science says that acceptance of a theory is warranted only based on evidence. Not proof, evidence supporting it. The strength of a scientific theory is the strength of the evidence that supports it. All science comes with error bars. Measurements are not perfect. One of the things they like to point out in the flat earth is over the last 2,000 years or so, we've had different distances to the sun. Even in the last couple of hundred years, the distance has been refined slightly. They don't understand the difference between refining a distance and just making up different distances. Simply because a distance is refined does not mean that it's invalidated. Simply because Einstein improved on the understanding of gravity that Newton had doesn't mean that gravity doesn't exist. It doesn't mean that Newtonian physics don't work. They do. Not all theories are equal. Theories that have strong supporting evidence are better than theories without supporting evidence. When you have two competing theories, one with evidence and one without it, you go with the theory that has the evidence. Flat Earth and Globe Earth are not equal competing theories. There is ample evidence for a Globe Earth. There is none for a Flat Earth. They are not equal. Now, I'd said that science does not prove things, but it does disprove things. If the Earth is flat and stationary and your laser ring gyro measures a 15 degree per hour rotation, you can test that. But there comes a time that you've done enough tests that continuing to deny the rotation of the Earth becomes absurd. It is pointless. We are well past that point. The Earth is unquestionably rotating. 
and it is confirmed by a variety of means, from the Foucault pendulum to sunrise and sunset to a mechanical gyro compass. It's no longer up to debate. It is what it is. It's rotating. Now, the way the flat Earth survives is based on their standard of evidence. First of all, any evidence for the flat Earth is simply accepted as soon as it's offered. Any evidence for the globe Earth requires proof, and the proof is never going to be enough for the flat earthers. One of my favorite questions is, how do you falsify the flat earth? And to date, I have never had a flat earther give me a valid way to falsify the flat earth. There's always one more thing that has to be checked before they can do it. Now, most people are not old enough to remember that smoking was once considered to be a relatively harmless vice. In the late 1950s, scientific evidence began to emerge that linked smoking to lung cancer. Now, the cigarette companies realized that this would be devastating to them, and it was in their own best interest to combine together and try and develop a uniform approach to opposing this scientific evidence. So basically what they did was they hired a marketing company to come up with a strategy that they could do. So the marketing company came back with a number of suggestions. First of all, dispute the facts. Second of all, find your own experts to dispute their experts. Try and develop a sense of bias in their experts. Who was funding them? Were they getting government funding? Were the insurance companies funding them? Did the scientists have anything in their backgrounds that maybe could be exploited? Maybe they had been investigated in the McCarthy era. The goal of this campaign was not necessarily to refute the evidence that there was a link between smoking and lung cancer. The goal was to establish doubt. The evidence isn't all in. This evidence that they are presenting is not really conclusive. We have evidence to the contrary. We have our own alternate facts. Now, if you are a smoker and you're faced with a decision to try and quit smoking, which is very difficult to do, you could latch on to this and say, well, you know, really, I'd like to quit smoking, but I don't think it's quite as essential right now because even though the government says that smoking is linked to lung cancer, the evidence isn't really all in yet. You know, it's not really conclusive 100%. Science is never conclusive 100%. It's always subject to revision in face of new data. But right now, the data that we have, we have to go with because that's the best data that we do have. And if it supports a certain course of action, that's the course of action we take until something comes along and changes it. Now, one overwhelming factor in science denial is the belief in conspiracies. Fluorinated water is for mind control. Chemtrails are nefarious chemicals being sprayed by them to do something to us. Mass shootings? All crisis actors. The moon landing? Done on a Hollywood studio which happened to be relocated to Area 51. 9-11 was a red flag so that we could invade the Middle East and get their oil. Of all of these conspiracies, Flat Earth is probably the biggest one because it requires the cooperation of all world governments even governments that are hostile to each other. It also requires the cooperation of science and industry. And quite frankly, anybody that even knows anything about navigation, we have to be in on it too. A predisposition to conspiratorial thinking is a prerequisite of believing in the flat earth. You cannot believe in the flat earth unless you believe in conspiracies. Now, at the Flat Earth International Conference in 2018, they had a seminar on street theater and recruitment. I think they called it flat smacking. And one of the things that people that were trying to recruit folks to the flat earth were advised to do is if somebody was firm and told you that they did not believe in conspiracies, then walk away from them. They're not woke yet. They're a waste of your time. Now, there are certain techniques that you can use to recruit people to the flat earth. First of all, you establish that they believe in conspiracies. Do you agree with mainstream science that man-made carbon dioxide is the only cause of global warming? Well, first of all, that's a straw man argument. Nobody says that man-made carbon dioxide is the one and only cause of global warming. It says that it is a major contributing factor, but not the only cause. 
and if somebody points that out, that no, that's not the sole cause, there are other things. Oh, so you agree that people are trying to hide that from us. Notice that they're not refuting the actual argument for global warming, nor are they refuting the idea that global warming is occurring. What they're trying to do is they're trying to establish this conspiracy that somebody's hiding the true facts behind global warming from you. Now, if somebody were to bring up evidence for a curved Earth, such as ships disappearing bottom up, well, all you have to do is you have to deny that evidence. You have to say that any evidence to the contrary in flat Earth is being manufactured by the people with a vested interest in hiding the true shape of the Earth. Can you really trust scientists? Have you ever met one? So the idea that this evidence of the flat Earth is being hidden by them reinforces the conspiracy that they're hiding the true shape of the Earth. Then the other thing that you can do is you can play on the ignorance of your audience. Not everybody has training in the sciences. There are people that are English majors, for example, at universities. They may not necessarily have a lot of a physics background or a lot of earth science background. When they start talking to you about what they understand the evidence for a globe earth to be, ask them a question that they can't answer. We used to call this sandbagging people. Oh, so the earth is round, eh? And it, objects dip below the horizon because of earth curve. Great. How thick is the mantle? How deep is the crust? What's the deepest hole that has ever been drilled? How do we know what the mantle is? Cause them to question their own knowledge. Cause them to question their understanding of earth science. Above all, be calm when you're talking to somebody that you're attempting to recruit. Let them think that you're listening to them, and you're trying to act as a guide to them, and you're somebody that can be trusted. Say that, well, many of these things can be seen on a globe Earth, but they can be seen on a flat Earth too. How would you tell the difference? How do you know for sure it's the Earth that's rotating and not the sky over it? How would you test for that? To be honest with you, I have a science background. It took me a little while to figure out a good way to do that. I came up with mechanical gyro compasses. They absolutely confirm it's the earth rotating and not the sky. But how many people know what a mechanical gyro compass is or how it actually works and why it demonstrates that the earth is rotating and not the sky? Not many people. Now, one of the things that I've always done to try and counter the flat earth is I've said, okay, well, in your mind, what would invalidate the flat earth? And then I let them talk. Now, what Dr. McIntyre recommended was ask them about their beliefs and how they came about them. Ask them what single piece of evidence would convince them that the Earth was not flat. It was, in fact, spherical. How would they test for that? And then be quiet. Let them give you a test. Okay. How would you test for that? All right. What would a result be that you would expect on a flat Earth versus a globe Earth? One of the things that he did was he took one of the speakers from the Flat Earth Conference out to dinner. And during the course of the dinner, you know, they just had a little small talk, and then he finally asked the question, what would convince you that the Earth was a globe? And after trying to dodge the question, Dr. McIntyre kind of pressed it a little bit. No, really, what one thing would convince you that the Earth was not flat, that it was really a globe? And he finally said, well, a flight across Antarctica. Well, there are flights across Antarctica. This is a direct flight from Santiago, Chile to Auckland, New Zealand, and it goes over Antarctica. Well, have you ever been on that flight, he asked? Well, no, but you know something? I'd be happy to pay for a ticket for you and I to take that flight. We'll crowdfund it, and you can take it for yourself. Uh, well, okay. Uh, now, on the flat Earth model, the Earth is surrounded by a mountain range called the ice wall that keeps all of the water in, and that mountain range is some 25,000 miles long. Well, what would the distance between Santiago, Chile, and Auckland, New Zealand be? Could you make that without refueling? Well, maybe not. It would have to be an awful long ways. Okay, could we agree that if we could make that flight without refueling, that the Earth was a globe? Well, no. Okay, why not?
And the guy stuttered a little bit. He was, you could see the wheels in his head turning, so to say. And finally, he came up with, well, maybe planes don't really need to refuel. So Dr. McIntyre said something I thought that was rather profound. He says, okay, well, in all the history of jet travel, are you telling me that all of the refueling stops in Greenland and Alaska, those were all for show in case somebody had to fly from Santiago to Auckland, and it was a matter of proving that the Earth was a globe if it was an unrefueled flight, so they decide they would decide not to refuel on that one? And he said yes. And that was pretty much the end of the dinner. That is the type of reasoning you see in the flat Earth. 